So this video I think is really, really important. Um, it's about bisexuality, bisexual people and biphobia. There's a lot of bi in that and there's a lot of bi people in this room, so that, that helps. I think this will be really educational and we're gonna hear about people's experiences and about the fact that bisexual people can actually get prejudice, not just from straight people, but actually from within the LGBTQ plus community as well. So who was the kickoff with kind of when you started thinking to yourself that you were bisexual and, and the kind of experience, the kind of journey you went on? Simple question. <laughs> Um, I guess I've always kind of like knew, like known that I'm bisexual or known that I, I preferred more than just the male gender. Um, but I guess I never really understood that there was terminology that I could relate to. I knew there was an umbrella of LGBTQ+, but I didn't know if I really fit in that because I had heterosexual leanings as well. What reactions did you have when you came out? Uh, it was really interesting because I was, I was mostly just scared of family when I came out. I was just like, oh my God, they're going to kill me. Mum's going to be so upset. I'm not going to like marry a nice Indian man. So I came out in an article in my magazine and then I just kind of like threw my laptop across the room and just hid because I didn't, <laughs> didn't want to see any of the reactions. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. Them. Yeah, I was just like hiding under like three blankets, just like, oh my God. Um, but when I looked on my laptop and my phone again, it was amazing. Like everyone was just so nice and so welcoming and open about it. I think it's interesting that you say you always knew. I spent a lot of my um, uh, my childhood, if you like, in opposite sex relationships. So for, for me, it wasn't until I was um, 18 that I actually came out as, as bi. You know, my, most of my immediate friends were, you know, thought they were accepting, but actually when you had a more prolonged conversation, you realised I just never thought that in 2019 I would still have to go over the same, quite boring to be honest, like myth busting uh, about, uh, about bi people. Now, Alex, you haven't actually come out to your parents yet, have you? Hi, Mum. Oh. <laughs> um, blimey! Yeah. Wow! Well, yeah, um, I guess I, a lot of what you guys have said has resonated with me. Um, I'm only 20, but I've had, like, you know, I've had the thoughts most of my life. I just didn't know what bisexuality was. I always thought you had to subscribe to, like, you're either straight or you're gay. I didn't know what I was, and then, you know, obviously now, like, my, my friends know. Um, I don't really care about what people think like I'm quite happy to be bisexual in the community what were the kind of responses you got I still get people you know people say oh you're greedy or <laughs> they or they ask you for a threesome which is just really weird and it's just I don't just to get sexualized like that straight away okay. just because you say you're bisexual or they say you're confused I've actually had uh, a gay friend of mine say I don't exist oh, wow. to my face Wow, I just erased your existence. Yeah, I just disappeared Actually, in that moment, sure. yeah. I was just completely gone. Um, no, I'm just I'm just remembering that I've just came out to my mum. So. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. Because I remember thinking to myself, oh my word, my, li my life now is going to be far more complicated. Mm -hmm. I mean, what did you think? Well, to be honest, it only became complicated when I realised I was bi, because I had it in my head that everyone, like all girls, just fancied other girls as well. So I remember a conversation at school about Emma Watson, actually. It's a random conversation, teenagers at school. Who here would snog Emma Watson if they had the chance? And I remember me and another girl who's since come out as bi. I'm not even bi, <laughs> I, I would. I know, yeah. <laughs> and we were like, yeah, of course. And I remember all the other girls at the table turning to us like we'd just announced we were aliens. We were sort of like, oh, <laughs> is that not a thing? So... In terms of the attitudes, especially problematic attitudes, it's different, um, particularly with men and how men and women are treated. Uh, Same-sex male attraction, it, if, if a man even kisses another man, it's automatically we are just completely 100% gay now. With women, it's more about they're objectified. I mean, do you think it's a really different experience? Yeah, definitely. When it comes to uh, bisexual men, I find that uh, their existence isn't acknowledged enough in all communities, whether it be straight or gay, um, whereas with women, we're often fetishised. Fetishized. Mm. I can't pronounce that yeah. word, sorry. Well, go for that, <laughs> that's fine. Personally, me being in a relationship that was mixed gender, um, if I ever did come out as bisexual, the first question would be, can we have a threesome then? And it was just like, oh. <laughs> now, you're non-binary and bisexual. How did the kind of, you know, because you were to come out in terms of your gender and your sexual identity, how did that kind of mesh together, kind of that process for you? Um, a massive washing machine of confusion, <laughs> um, honestly. Um, I mean, in my life I've come out as 
lesbian, I've come out as a gay man at one point, like, and I think it's important for me to remember for myself that, like, that's fine and you don't have to know straight away. Yeah, but I think in terms of being bi and non-binary, the one thing that I get a lot is people say, like, really well-meaningly, but they say, oh, I thought, I thought we don't say bi anymore because it's, like, transphobic, it's, like, doesn't include non-binary, but, um, because bi means two, so two mm. means men and women. But I've had people, like, tell me, like, oh, no, you can't be bi, and I'm like, but I am, and I'm <laughs> non-binary, and I'm trans, so, like, yeah. It's quite exhausting, isn't it, having to constantly justify your own existence? Yeah. <laughs> Um, someone get, put to me suggested that uh, people will forget your sexuality and will assume you're either gay or straight depending on your current or recent relationship. Oh, Is that? Oh, yeah. Ooh, hello. Oh, yeah. It's almost a fear yeah. of getting into a heterosexual relationship. Are you going to erase your own queerness? I almost feel like I might be putting myself out there to look for a relationship with like mm -hmm. a woman or non-binary person over a man almost. Um, just out of fear. Can you join in, in like pride, if you have a hetero mm. partner? Like, you know, you know, all those kind of things. Like, are you suddenly just straight now? Yeah, did people basically have that? It's like, they suddenly go, oh, you're straight now. It's yeah. like, do you not understand the yeah, concept? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> My first um, relationship, which was with a woman, um, one of the first things she said to me was, I hope you're not bisexual. I don't like bisexuals. So, for about a year, I was actually in the closet. Sorry. And being put forced into the closet, I mean, it, it does take its toll, doesn't it, on mental health if you can't express... That's not how it should be, mm -hmm. but it is. I'm hoping that there will be a day when people will think, meh, whatever. When it comes to dating, I pretty much only date bisexual people because they're pretty much the only people that understand. Because mm -hmm. um, if I was to go to a girl and then, you know, just a normal straight relationship and then say I'm bi, that's going to be like a massive thing, obviously, as it, you know, it's, it's a big thing, but it, immediately all the stereotypes come out and, you know, sexual health needs to get checked. Um, I don't know, it, it's just, it's kind of horrible and it, it allows erasure and like, what we're talking about, like the, the way that bisexual people are treated, just to continue and to flourish. Like, if you're bi, straight people might see you as being like tainted, mm. Mm. but then there's also the sort of other way around, and I don't know if any of you have experienced this, but like, you like you're not a gold star lesbian, or you're not. Mm -hmm. a, yeah, gold star gay. I've never yeah, gold star gay. Yeah, I, I haven't. But I don't and know to if explain anyone. what that is, that's somebody who's yeah. never slept with yeah. the uh, opposite gender. So I think that's an example of sort of biphobia from gay and lesbian yeah. people. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, just because you know, uh, you can be a woman and have any genitals. You can be a man and have any genitals. So the whole idea of being a gold star lesbian seems to be weirdly fixated on vaginas. And I find that very strange, that there's that weird fixation. I think patriarchy is hugely important to any conversation about the LGBT community. It's, it's all underpinned by that and by this very, very binary idea of, of exactly how life should go. And that's one of the things I find really frustrating about um, the, the lack of solidarity of the Costa community, because actually it's important we talk about uh, the different experiences we have, but actually separating them out sometimes is, is problematic because they are interconnected. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's the same reason why I find it frustrating uh, that, you know, conversations about racism of our, within our community are sometimes dismissed. I mean, homophobia, particularly amongst men, is, is, is gender policing, isn't it? It's all actually stems from patriarchy. It's all underpinned by that um, in, in the way, in, in the sense that, you know, uh, men are supposed to uh, act and behave in a very specific way. And so or women should act in a very specific way. This is why I think like bisexual representation on TV is so important. And it kind of ties into so much that you guys have said already. Like, for example, I'm a huge Emma Dale fan. And they recently, well, quite recently, they have um, their first bisexual male character. And he has been subject to, like, a barrage of biphobic language, like, constantly. And it's really hard because it's like you're saying, when you look for bisexual representation and you look for bisexual films and you finally think, ah, oh, OK, here we go, a story with a bisexual, it's just more tropes. Well, I can think of two soaps at the moment are currently running a storyline with a man who is bisexual with a gay man who cheats with a woman and gets her pregnant. And it's kind of like, 
that's not the visibility we want. Just long for the day where bisexual people doesn't have, it doesn't have to be the plot. Like, they can just be bi and just be a person. Yeah. They don't have to be hypersexualized or be cheating on someone yeah. or doing all this. I think this is a problem we have with yeah. just storytelling, full stop. Yeah. I mean, it's just out there with everything, you know. It's about, like, you know, queer representation. It's about race. It's about so much stuff. So they should, in representation, when they have those characters, they should be clear. They should be clear use the term. It, but that's not the whole gist of the character. Of they should be able to say, like any other aspect of that character, like a personality trait or something, you know. Oh, by the way, this character's also bisexual. Yeah, they don't have to then have stories <laughs> where they sleep with By the way, yeah, they're they going to cheat also. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Actually, one of the things I have a, a problem with is, is, is this narrative that portrays um, uh, that kind of in, insinuates that the, that the that bi people aren't just as diverse as any other straight or, or not you know or any other part of the community. Actually, yes, some people want to be in a monogamous relationship and some people don't. And and actually, that that isn't any different for bi people than it is for anybody who identifies in any other way. Um, you had mentioned earlier about um, uh, people talking about threesomes. So, suddenly, that is part of a conversation, and it's like being bi doesn't necessarily mean you want to have a threesome at all. There's no connection. Connection. Some people buy who do want to have a threesome, that's great and that's fine for them. No, so and it's not, not okay sure. to suddenly just throw that in without any a kind of... Absolutely. Um, and, 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 that, and that was a huge important point for me. Um, I was going to suggest things not to say to bisexual people. Mm -hmm. With gay people, for example, a classic one when a gay person comes out is, oh, we already knew. It's like, don't tell me that. It's kind of... <laughs> yeah. This is not... Uh, but, but what do you think, what are the kind of key things that people should not ask bisexual people? Yeah. Do you want a threesome? Yeah. <laughs> we covered that a lot, yeah. but that is probably number one for me. Yeah. I always get like, um, people always ask me like, oh, so you've been with men and women then? And it's like, it's none of your business. Like, yeah. I'd still be bi if I hadn't, or if I had, yeah. like, they want, like, proof. I've, I've had this one specifically from, from gay men. It's like, well, so what was it like dating a woman? And I'm like, it's not, I don't know, it, I'm not an experiment. It's not, it wasn't a science test where, you know, I can give you a little download of how, how different, I don't know. I just find these things really unusual. It's like it's a David Attenborough nature documentary then, they're watching the bisexuals <laughs> in the wild. And, yeah. I, I, I'd probably appreciate it more maybe if David Attenborough was doing <laughs> the voiceover for the moment, because maybe he'd um, exaggerate how ridiculous it sounds. You know. I was part of a woman on woman support group and this um, woman was questioning her sexuality and just said I'm not too sure if I'm bisexual or if I'm lesbian and uh, one of the core members actually just said to her just make sure you're not bisexual because bisexual is bad. I gave up my volunteership oh. the next day and grasped on her to the rest of the core members Correct. of the group because that was absolutely disgusting. Well, I find that some guys, if you tell them that you're bisexual, I mean, the, the first thing they do is the threesome, oh, but yeah, also so they see you as a conquest, which is weird because you're bisexual anyway, yeah. and they'll say to you, <laughs> they'll say to you like, oh, I'm going to turn you. Oh, and it's kind God. of like, I don't think you understand what bisexuality is. They're like, oh, you like me, I've turned you. Like, no. You really do not understand oh, the concept, do you? Yeah. Yeah. It's the easiest way to get a bisexual person to walk away from you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I think it's a yeah. Because with gay, when you come out as gay, it's like you fancy all men. All of a sudden, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like it's like don't flatter yourself, mate. But with bisexual, I suppose it's literally they're saying you fancy every single person yeah. on earth. Oh, yes. <laughs> I know. Yeah, exactly. More people I uh, I kind of go out of my way not to fancy. <laughs> That was absolutely fascinating. I learned personally so much from that. I, I hope you did as well uh, about the, the lived experience of what bisexual people uh, go through. I didn't realize how tough it was, the specific challenges that aren't just simply about uh, like the homophobia that, that gay and lesbian people face. Um, and that lack of visibility, the erasure that takes place, all of it was fascinating. And I think it was a real wake up call that we need to talk more about this issue. Um, but I want to hear your thoughts. I think this is a really interesting format. I think we should do this for other issues. So I'd love your suggestions about other other kind of similar things we could do, those sorts of discussions. Please send those through. Uh, plus your suggestions about who we should talk to an interview. Uh, as always, really appreciated. Uh, but as ever, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'll see you next time.